Hi, welcome to healthdetective.co.nz where we solve your health mystery. My name is Dr. Sam Shea. In today's mystery, we're going to solve the problem of pain, coldness, numbness, tingling, or weakness in the thumb and the first two, two and a half fingers right here. So you'll, you'll notice is that I'm talking about this region here, where in another video I covered this region called the ulnar nerve. This we're going to talk about the median nerve. Now, some of you may already jumped to conclusions and say, oh, well, that's carpal tunnel. That's not necessarily true. The carpal tunnel is a very common diagnosis. It's actually the least common reason for this diagnosis, unfortunately. Now, this is real important if, the, you know, this is our hands. This is our hands is what make us human. If you're a musician or a body worker or you're a mechanic or you're, you're simply a parent that has to, to pick up children, you know, our hands are so important to us and it's really debilitating when they're not functioning, particularly when they're in pain or they're really cold or they're weak. It's just, it's, it, it makes life really difficult in, in our world today. So I'm going to teach you uh, what to check for, what are the different areas that may be actually causing this that's not the carpal tunnel, and some strategies to help guide you in the direction of how to actually take care of it. So. This is called the median nerve neuropathy, when you have a pain in here, it's our median nerve pathology. Now, the median nerve actually starts from the neck by combining five nerves together, and it blends together and then it traverses all the way down through the arm on the outside of the arm into the hand here. We covered ulnar nerve in another video, and right now we're going to cover what real carpal tunnel is. Now, real carpal tunnel is really important to distinguish between fake carpal tunnel and unfortunately a lot of people get cut, they go get hacked, their wrists hacked open because of misdiagnosis, medical misadventure, malpractice. I've seen it uh, where they just, oh you pain in your hand therefore carpal tunnel, let's just cut it up. It's, it's really bad if you don't get the diagnosis correct. So true carpal tunnel is where you have atrophy or muscle wasting on the thumb side of the palm. This is, you know, medical speak, this is called the, the atrophy of the phenar eminence. It's very, you know, if you scrabble enthusiasts, that's, uh, you know, it's a great word to add to your uh, lexicon there for, uh, you know, for, for scrabble. So, you know, in normal speak, this is just the, the, the water of muscles at the base of the thumb. True carpal tunnel is where, uh, where you've got compression, usually a wrist bone called a lunate, uh, slides and crushes up against the median nerve and then that creates atrophy. But that's almost, that is such a rare thing to actually happen. Most of the time the pain in these three fingers is uh, caused by what's called pronator teres syndrome. Pronator teres syndrome is you've got this muscle here uh, which which is pronation, That's this is pronation when you rotate your hand down versus supination. When, when I learned it in anatomy classes, we hold our soup through supination and then the other thing was pronation, where you pour it out. So, it, I know it's kind of dorky, but you know, if it helps you remember, it helped me remember. Supination, pronation. So the pronator teres is the muscle that, allow, well, one of the two muscles in the forearm that does this. Now the problem with the pronator teres at the elbow is that if it spasms, it can actually crush the median nerve and create the symptoms here. Now, it, there's it's it, it's a problem because in today's world we live in a pronated world through driving, typing, and writing. Now, you know, as hunter gatherers, we didn't walk around like this. That's you know. <laughs> That, you know, it's, it's not hunter gatherers and we're around T-Rexes, but this is basically what a T-Rex looks like. So you walk around like this. As humans, we're like this, except in the modern world, we're like this and crouched over. So this pronator teres is really abused and overused in today's modern sitting society. So that's why it's very common that the problems are coming from the elbow as opposed to the wrist. Now, there are three other places um, before the neck where you can have a problem with the median nerve getting compromised. And this is called the thoracic outlet syndrome. Well, the thoracic outlet is, again, Scrabble speak for, you, you've got your thorax, which is your chest, and the outlet is that there's three places where there's a gap, where things can crush against the, the nerves or the arteries uh, going down from the neck all the way down to the arm. Now, if you've got pain in these three fingers, it could be that the nerves are getting compressed 
and anywhere in those three spots in the thoracic outlet. So the first spot, if you're going up, would be the pec minor. Now the pec minor, that's the muscle that connects from this bump here on the front uh, where the, the shoulder blade actually comes forward and attaches onto this little, and there's a little bump coming forward called the coracoid process where the pec minor um, uh, starts and then it inserts on the uh, third, fourth, and fifth rib. Now, what happens is that this muscle can get spasmed, again, with hunching forward, because that's the pec minor contracting, and it can compress on the nerves there. Then you can have, between the collarbone and the first rib, you can have the nerves being compressed between those two structures, and then you've got two muscles on the side of the neck called the front and the middle scalene, or to be anatomically geeky about it, the anterior middle scalene, and those muscles, if they spasm, they can spasm up and crush the nerve and create symptoms downstream into the hands. Now the last place that you can have a problem is actually at the spine itself where the five nerves emerge to form the median nerve. C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. Now those nerves are in between, sandwiched between the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh cervical vertebra and the first and second thoracic vertebra. So if you have misalignments or degeneration in the neck and upper thorax, upper thoracic spine, then you can have problems with the nerves that then form the median nerve to create symptoms in the first, the thumb and the first three fingers. Now, th this is treatable without surgery, okay? Now, the way, how do we treat is we look at the location. Is it in the wrist? Is it in the carpal tunnel? Which is the rarest place for it to be. Is it in the elbow, the pronator tear, where it's very likely to be? Is it in the pec minor? Is it in the, underneath the first, between the first rib and the collarbone? Is it uh, being crushed between the first and middle scalene, or is it in the neck and in the upper, uh, upper spine of the, of the mid-back? So that's how we locate it. How we treat it without surgery is very simple. We do acupuncture. Now we don't do acupuncture in the hand that has the problem. I do a very specific style of acupuncture, which I love, called Dr. Tan's balance method. I do it in the opposite foot. So this is uh, kind of called the, the double negatives, is that I do it in the opposite uh, acupuncture channels in the opposite side of the body, and it double negatives back and helps right away. So I love this technique because you can feel the results almost instantly, and you can drop the pain, numbness, tingling, etc. very, very quickly. And also, because the needles are in a completely opposite side of the body, A, it does, I'm not going to be sticking needles in a painful, you know, tingling muscle or joint or anything. Also, it keeps the needles well away from the area where I can use my hands and my other skills to actually work on this on the damaged area manually. So I'm not going to jostle any needles. So it's great. Needles in the complete opposite foot, which frees up the hand and the, the elbow and the shoulder to be worked on manually. Using things like myofascial techniques like soft tissue to work on the muscles and the ligaments and other soft tissue to free all this up. Also, I can adjust the joints, the wrist, the elbow, the first rib, the collarbone, the vertebra, and look at biomechanics, lifting biomechanics, sleep posture, typing position. If you're, if you're on the handlebars like this, as opposed to like this, which is more an ulnar nerve uh, neuropathies, you, or checking your workstation, your typing situation, your mouse hand, these are all non-surgical approaches to help avoid getting cut. And even if you have been cut and that the treatment didn't, the surgery didn't work, which happens, you can still get treated non-surgically through these methods to give you relief. The other things you can do is look at reducing inflammation both topically, where you can put specific natural anti-inflammatory substances along the pathway and on the hand itself, and also internally by looking at what are the sources of inflammation that you're creating inside yourself. So you have the level of inflammation of the injury, and then you've got the body burden of inflammation. So we can just treat the injury, we can lower the body burden, or we can do both. And so that's where we're looking at diet and, and other factors to help facilitate reducing inflammation by reducing the global amount so that the body can heal faster and you'll be in less pain and discomfort. So I hope this was helpful explaining what median nerve neuropathy is about. Please contact me at healthdetective.co.nz and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you.